Hey, so this video is a little different. Usually I love creating STEM projects for kids out of craft materials, but I also make other things, including this Montessori style electronic button box that I invented for my son. He's been way more interested in buttons and switches and things that move than any of the toys that we ever bought him. So I wanted to create something that looked great and was super fun to play with. Here's the first version that I made. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the design process that I went through to make changes for version two. And if you want to see a build guide for the final version, you can find that on instructables.com. There's a link below. First, I use this online tool called MakerCase to design all the box pieces. Next, I brought those pieces into Illustrator and added all of the cutouts for the buttons and switches. And then I cut it out on my laser cutter. Next, everything gets glued and clamped together. The finished box has a lot of scorch marks and glue and other rough edges, so I decided to give it a thorough sanding on my janky orbital sander, and it looks much better. Next, I rubbed in some cutting board wax just to protect the wood a bit from my toddler's inevitably sticky hands. Okay, on to adding all the electronic hardware. When I was deciding what kinds of buttons and switches to add, it was really important to me to use these two real light switches, because I wanted my kid to get practice using them. I also wanted light bulbs, not just 5mm LEDs. Also, having some kind of moving element and not just lights seemed really exciting to me, so I opted to use this plastic gearbox motor, and then I just laser cut a little propeller that fits onto it. Now all the components just go into their respective cutouts. For the motor, I snapped it onto this plastic motor mount that I had. Then that gets attached to the front of the box with a plastic nut and bolt. The nice thing is that the speed controller dial is going to cover up this component, so it's not going to look very messy. Mounting the light bulbs to the box was one of the trickiest parts of this project, and I found that these plastic cable organizer strap things worked out really well. I had to trim the corners so that they would fit right here, but in version 3 I just used shorter screws to fix that. Okay, I'm jumping around a little bit. Uh, we're back to the front of the box and I'm adding in the battery holder. It's held in place with some other laser cut pieces that are just glued in there. I thought about covering up the battery holder with a thin piece of wood or putting it on the side of the box or something, but I like the idea of making them really visible because when they need to be changed, it's going to be a great teachable moment. The last components are the LEDs and these are just fit into their cutouts and then held in place with a glob of hot glue. Finally, the cover plate is installed and that's it. Okay, all the electronics are in. It takes quite a while, but it is so satisfying when it's done. Next, I designed a knob in Fusion 360 and 3D printed it, and then this just gets glued onto the motor speed controller. Now, all the electronics get connected. The only downside to these light bulbs is that the soldering iron needs to be extremely hot to solder components onto it. So hot, in fact, that it can destroy the components inside the light bulbs. So in version three, I totally changed how this was wired up. This is one of the more complex electronics projects I've ever done. Uh, usually I just work with hot glue and craft sticks and stuff, so if you see me doing something wrong here, uh, you're more than welcome to tell me in the comments. <laughs> the last step is just to cap off some of the main terminals. Okay, I gave it a quick test and everything works except for some reason the motor did not turn on. And after a bit of troubleshooting, I discovered that it was because the button wasn't working, probably because my soldering iron was too hot decided to take this opportunity to replace the button type because another colorful plastic button kind of looked like the same ones that control the LEDs, and I liked these all metal momentary buttons. So while I waited for those to show up in the mail, I went ahead and cut out the acrylic and added that onto the front of the box. Here's the new button. I really like it because it makes a very satisfying clicking sound. And it's visually distinct from the other buttons. However, one problem is that it's slightly wider than the old button, so this means I need to enlarge the cutout. I tried various methods to do this as cleanly as possible, but it was still pretty rough around the edges. But in the end, I got it in there. Okay, now that everything is working, it's time to put on the back of the box. I thought about using finger joints like the rest of the box, but then I realized that if I needed to fix anything in the future, it would be really hard to undo, so instead I just screwed it in place. I also added some of these felt pads to the bottom so the screws don't scrape up any surfaces that the box is on. 
and I added some of this child safety foam onto the corners. And part of this was to keep my kids' toes safe in case the box fell off of the couch or something, but it also keeps the button box itself safe. You can see I gave it a quick drop test, and it holds up pretty well from about 18 inches above my work table. So I was pretty happy with this version, but there were still some things that could have been better. So I went through the whole process of creating another one, and this time I added some color phasing LEDs that are held down with a momentary button, and I completely changed how these light bulbs are attached. So I'm really happy with this version, and it's been so great to see my son play with it. He uses it almost every day. Okay, that's it for this video. I know it's a little different from the stuff that I usually create, so let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.